The year 193 AD was a very eventful one in Roman history. Commodus, the last of the Antonine emperors, was assassinated. The power vacuum generated by it exploded on a short but very bloody civil war, the so-called Year of the Five Emperors. And out of that bloodbath, a new dynasty ascended to the imperial throne. These were the Severans. For the next four decades, the Severan dynasty marked Roman history with its very unique characters. If there is a dynasty that deserves an HBO series dedicated to it, it would be the Severans. During the four decades they were in power, the, Roman, the Romans pretty much saw it all. Ruthless em soldier emperors, scheming empresses, fratricide, degeneracy, palace intrigue, backstabbing, warmongering, the Severans had it all. So today, let's explore the coinage of these very unique characters and talk a bit about each of them in this two parts episode. Otherwise there would be too many people to cover in just one video. Let's go! And we start by the founder of the dynasty itself, Septimius Severus. Originally from Leptis Magna, on modern-day Libya, his early life before assuming the empire was that of a typical member of the provincial aristocracy. But in the political chaos after the death of Commodus in 193, Severus displayed a remarkable ability to sense the moments of weakness of each of his four contestants to the throne, letting them kill themselves allying with others on the right moments and striking with his own legions when the time was right. By April, maybe June 193, he already controlled Rome. The coinage of Septimius Severus is very abundant. His silver coins in particular are very common, in great part due to the debasement he enacted to pay for his moves on the civil war and the raises he gave to his troops. He reduced the silver content from around 75% to a little over 50% of the denarius, meaning any coins from previous emperors that reached his coffers were restruck in his image with less, less silver in them. Despite the lesser silver content, artistically, however, his coinage is actually very good, very good looking. His very impressive beard and curly hair look great in coin form. So how about we look at one of his coins? This denarius I'm showing here is from the very from very late in his reign, between 210 and 211 AD. Septimius's reign was marked by military campaigns. He struck coins commemorating each of his military endeavors, and in this case, he celebrates his campaign against the Caledonian tribes on northern England. He would actually fall ill and die in this campaign. Yet, he he's celebrated here as Britannicus, the conqueror of the Britons, as we as we can read. Severus Pius Augustus Britannicus. On the reverse, we have the depiction of Victoria, the incarnation of victory, holding a Caledonian shield and sitting over a pile of captured spoils of war. She also holds a palm branch, symbolizing the pacified province, which wasn't really true as the Caledonians were never really fully conquered and constantly raided the north. And the legends read, Victoria Britannica for the victory over the Britons. Septimius's wife, Julia Domna, was a noble woman of Syrian origin and is the first of many very interesting women from the Severan dynasty we will be exploring. She was rather influential, being very active among the intellectual elite of Rome, Rome during the time, and he, she accompanied her husband on all of his campaigns, so as a result it is said that the troops liked her very much. Since she comes from Syria, to illustrate her coinage, I decided to pick a curious piece. If you're used to what a denarius looks like, you will notice that this coin looks unusual, and that is because it was not struck in the Imperial Mint of Rome. This coin, dated to around 198 AD, was struck in the city of Laodicea in Syria, likely an Imperial Mint established there temporarily to sustain the troops stationed next to the Syrian frontier with coinage of Imperial Standard. As we can see, it has this very interesting looking bust, clearly of a different style compared to the coins struck at Rome. Despite being struck in the Greek-speaking part of the empire, however, the legends are written in Latin, Julia Augusta. Heading to the reverse, we have Hilaritas, 
a goddess that personified happiness, joyousness. Empresses typically were shown on coins with these kinds of deities. Either very benign ones or goddesses that personified feminine attributes the Romans appreciated, such as chastity and femininity. Septimius and Julia had two sons, the future emperors Caracalla and Gita. Both were extensively depicted on coins, from the time Septimius was still emperor, shown as young Caesars, but also as emperors after his death, meaning their coinage is also very plentiful and easy to obtain for, for collectors. Let's start by looking at a denarius of Geta, the youngest son. This particular piece attributed to the year 211, so right after the death of his father, was struck at Rome. On the obverse, we can see the bearded bust of Geta. The vast majority of Geta's coins show an unbearded, young little boy, so it's quite interesting to see these. Some of his last coins showing an, a bearded man. Historical testimonies talk about how Geta looked a lot like his father, especially once he started to grow the beard. So it's interesting to see on coinage that he indeed starts looking a lot like his father. On the legends, we can see he is already co-emperor with his older brother. We can read, Imperator Caesar Publius Septimius Geta, Pius Augustus. Heading to the reverse, we have Felicitas, the goddess of happiness, holding a cornucopia, the symbol of abundance and plenty, and a long scepter with a caduceus, the symbol of commerce. So, in a sense, a representation of happiness and plentifulness coming through vibrant trade. Geta, however, met a violent end by the hands of his own brother, Caracalla. I've already made an episode exclusively on Caracalla because he was just such a bastard. When we think of cruel and evil emperors, we typically think of Caligula, Caligula or Nero, but Caracalla is up there in terms of sheer tyranny. He despised the Senate, purged all of his brother's supporters after he got rid of him, and his reign was marked by inflation and a series of wars which brought a lot of problems for the Roman state in the following decades. This denarius in particular I'm showing here is from Rome, from the year 213 AD. On the obverse we see the menacing looking bust of Caracalla, very different to his previous coins where he is depicted as a more benign looking, promising young co-emperor with his father. Caracalla also had a very imposing beard, his father definitely passed some very good beard genes to both his sons. On the legends, we see that Caracalla also celebrates the campaign he conducted alongside his father. On Britannia, it reads Antoninus Pius Augustus Britannicus. Looking at the reverse, we have Serapis, an eastern deity meant to symbolize the Egyptian representation of the Roman Jupiter. The god is raising his hand in the traditional Roman salutatio, the salute Roman emperors would typically make when addressing his troops or the people, and the legends make a reference to Caracalla's imperial positions for that particular year. So Pontifex Maximus, Tribunicia Potestas, Tribunician powers for the 16th year, Consul for the 4th year, Pater Patriae, father of his nation. And to make a point about how Caracalla showed very little regard to human life, here we have Plautilla, his wife. Plotilla was the daughter of Plotianus, a close friend and Praetorian prefect of Septimius Severus. Caracalla hated both Plotianus and Plotilla, and their marriage was basically a political one. Plotianus plotted against Caracalla due to his constant threats to, to himself and to his erratic behavior. When the plot was discovered, Caracalla had Plotianus executed and Plotilla exiled and later strangled. This denarius was struck in the name of Plotilla, and these are generally dated between 202 and 205 AD, when she was still an empress. On the obverse, we have the bus of Plotilla, with her hair nicely tied to the back of her head, in typical Roman fashion for the time. The legends read Plotilla Augusta. Heading to the reverse, we have a nice depiction of Venus, the goddess of beauty and love, naked up to her waist, carrying an apple and a palm branch. 
By her feet, nearly unrecognizable, we have a tiny figure, a cupid. The legends make reference to the goddess, Venus Victrix, the victorious Venus. Caracalla's attitude obviously made him lots of enemies, and a target for many plots on his life. In 217 AD, one of these plots finally managed to kill him. A disgruntled soldier approached him while he was taking a pee on campaign and stabbed him to death. The real culprit behind the plot, one of his Praetorians, was called Macrinus, managed to gather enough support of the troops by making huge promises of money and he managed to be raised as the next emperor. The Senate had no choice but to accept, so between 217 and 218 AD, the Severan dynasty's rule over the Roman Senate was interrupted by Macrinus. His reign was very short, just one year. In fact, he never set foot on Rome, the first emperor never to do so, but his portrait managed to get to the city, and plenty of coins with his image were struck, like this denarius we have here. On the obverse, we see his bust wearing a military cuirass. And notice the cropped beard, very typical of Roman soldiers who weren't allowed to let their beard get excessively long. Many of the future emperors that will come from the ranks of the military will be depicted on coins with beards such as this one. So a nice little historical touch there. The legends make reference to his new imperial name, Imperator Caesar. Marcus Opelius Macrinus Augustus. On the reverse, we have once more Felicitas, the goddess of happiness, holding her scepter and her caduceus. Since the Senate had to begrudgingly accept his position as emperor as the troops supported him, they reinforced that acceptance by giving him the entire series of typical titles any emperor would receive, so we can read in the legends. Vota Publica, Pontifex Maximus Tribunicia Potestas. The Vota Publica was the official vow of emperors to serve the Roman state, while the position of Pontifex Maximus was the chief of the Roman state religion, and Tribunicia Potestas, Tribunician powers, were typically renewed with every passing year. Since Macrinus was emperor for just a single year, we have no numbers after the titles, meaning he held these positions for just one year. But the Severans were not done just yet. Join me in the next episode where we look at the return of the Severans to power and the really nice coins they made. Hopefully I can release this video before Christmas. So I hope you enjoyed this first episode. Keep tuned for the second one. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe so this channel keeps growing. And I'll see you soon.